Job chapter 22 from verse 2 and 3. It will be projected. And so I want everybody to read it. Read it to yourself. Don't be reading it loud as though somebody will hear it. Read it to yourself. Something will come before our eyes tonight. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Can a man be profitable unto God? As he that is wise may be profitable unto himself. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or is it gain to him that thou makest thy way perfect? Give me amplified of this scripture so it might remove all the King James complexities and present it as simple as it is. Everybody, let's read together. One, two, three, go. Can a virtuous man be of use to God or a wise man be useful to himself? Next verse. Is it any pleasure or joy to the Almighty that you are righteous or is it benefit to him that you make your ways perfect? Ah, if you can get NIV again. <laughs> Please pardon me. There's a, a point that needs to rest tonight. Oh, 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 to me when the scripture opened to me suddenly I tell you a sense of deep responsibility rested upon my shoulders it is that responsibility I want to cast upon you tonight let's read together the NIV it's one scripture we have been looking at from different perspective the NIV says one two three go can a man be of benefit to God can even a wise person benefit God next verse what pleasure will it give to the Almighty if you were righteous? What will he gain if your ways were blameless? <laughs> this, this scripture is a question. A question they presented before man. God says stand righteous. God says live holy. God gave rules. God gave commandments. And man thinks that if you honor it, you are pleasing God. He says, can your righteousness add anything to me? Do you think that these instructions are because of me? Don't you know that the righteousness that you are righteous was for your own good? Did you know that there were consequences of everything you transgress? Do you know how many spirits are camping around you waiting for a law to be violated so that they can function on legal grounds? It says, can your righteousness be beneficial to God? Can God gain because you are holy? They talk about holiness and consecration. We think that me, I don't want to overdo it's, it's life that, that you are supposed to be guarding with that lifestyle. Yet, you think that you are pleasing God. He says, can a man be... Let's read the scripture again. Let somebody contemplate on these things. You will find out suddenly, there is nothing. All, all, all these things you are doing, thinking I, at least I'm trying. You are trying about what? This thing is about you. It's not about him. He has nothing to benefit from your righteousness. Your righteousness will not make him more a God. Your righteousness will not reduce his government from him. He was not voted, so he cannot end. Can a man be beneficial to God? If you know what is at stake when the devil presents options to you, the moment of temptation is not about pleasing God or pleasing Satan. It's about choosing to live. It's about you. It is you that is at stake, not God. If you fall, how many times? Do you know the number of creatures who are saying he is faithful every day? You know the worship that beams from heaven alone? 
your one voice of unfaithfulness cannot complicate the tone of worship. What is at stake? What is at stake when Satan presents temptation? What did you mortgage when you fall? It's not God. It is not God. You turn your back on yourself. You denied yourself. You betrayed yourself. When you fell, you betrayed your own destiny. And God brought a question to man tonight. He says, can a man be of benefit to God? Can even a wise person benefit him? Next verse, let me show you one question that blew my mind. What pleasure will it give to the Almighty if you were? That so is, you are not. You are not. But let's say you were righteous. He says, will I even still benefit from that? Oh, 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 the average man says, I want to please God. Can you please him? You don't know that the world, the earth, was designed and guarded with principles and laws. Those laws, God used love to communicate it to his children as commandments. Knowing fully well that these are the spiritual laws that guard the outcomes of the man's life. And so he used his commandments to present it as his own instruction. Both Satan and God agree that women, if you sleep and you are given to lust, given to fornication and adultery, your life will become nothing at the end of the day. Both the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light accept that a man who is always given to the craving of immorality, he will waste upon the bed of pleasure. So when they want to subscript a luminary in darkness, even darkness will demand that you will live a life of consecration to a level. Where is a herbalist? Why is his wife not living with him? <laughs> you don't know. Both realms understand what's at stake. It's not about pleasing God. It's you that is the object of contention. If you stand, you stand for yourself. If you fall, you betray yourself. It's, it's no God. All, all this thing you are doing, trying to think, eh, but I have tried now. Look at this other person. What are you talking about? It's you that you betrayed. You didn't betray God. The day you turn your back and fell, they began to look for another wise person. The whole world lies in wickedness and they see foolish people every day. A man say, but even God should know that I have tried. You have tried about what? The person you have betrayed now is you, not God. Pray! No. You know, I'm tired. The person that you just said I'm tired to is not God. Because prayer is not supposed to make God more a God. Prayer is supposed to bring you closer to the realities captured in the chronicles of eternity concerning what your life should be. And so when you enter time, the fall of Adam will regulate you. When that fall regulates you, there are laws put into time to enable you to run back and evolve into your true potential. And prayer is one of those tributaries. When you begin to pray, all of a sudden the drought of the flesh will fall as the fire of prayer is ignited upon your soul. But they say pray. And you say, even God knows. At least I tried. You don't want a glorious destiny. The person you betrayed is not God. It's you. Take one minute wherever you are. Ask yourself one question this night. Ask yourself one question. Have I been deceiving myself? Have I been deceiving myself so far? Even God should know. Even God should know that I am trying. You are trying. <laughs> you don't know what is at stake. He says in a great house, there are many vessels of gold, of silver, of wood, and of clay. How do they come into these cadres? He says some to honor and some to dishonor. How do they enter honor and dishonor? He says if a man can purge himself, 
is men that decide to be purged. If a man can purge himself, no spirit will purge you. You will choose and say, I will stand. I will stand. Come what may. I will stand. Others may fall, but I cannot. That is how you purge yourself. Come out from among them and be separate. Oh, ha, ha, oh. 